Today I'm going to show you how to paint a lovely still life painting using gouache. If you only have watercolor on hand, that's perfectly fine. I'll also show you some different ways to use gouache and we'll explore some subject matters as well and how to properly set up a lovely still life. Still life paintings are a great way to develop your painting skills. It's always my go-to when I don't know what to paint. A good still life is typically composed of some contrasting objects such as glass and fruit, linen and metal, or botanicals and ceramics. By the end of this class, you'll have a lovely still life painting that you can hang in your home. You'll also refine your painting skills. Please feel free to follow along my still life example, or you can definitely create your own as you'd like. I can't wait to see what you create. So let's talk about supplies. So first, what you're gonna need is some gouache paint. I will be using my gouache palette. I'll talk a little bit later about why I prefer to use my gouache in a palette. I know a lot of artists prefer to use gouache straight out of the tube and that's completely personal preference. As for paint brushes, I will be using three different sizes of Princeton Aqua Elite brushes. I'll be using a size zero, two, and four and I'll use the larger brush to cover larger surfaces and then the smaller brush for smaller details. The next thing you'll need is some watercolor paper. I'll be using the Canson Montval paper. That's my personal favorite kind of paper. I love the way that it works for my painting style. I would encourage you to use whatever paper you have on hand or whatever paper you feel the most comfortable using. The next thing you'll need is a mixing tray of some sort. I'll just be using a plain white plate. I find that mixing my paint on a ceramic surface is much easier and much smoother than using a plastic palette. I find that when I use a plastic palette, the water kind of bubbles up and doesn't really stick together. You'll also need a pencil I'll be using a mechanical pencil just so I can get that fine point. You'll also need a kneadable eraser. These are just a malleable eraser and they're a little bit more gentle on watercolor paper. If all you have on hand is a normal eraser, that's perfectly fine. Just try to be careful when you are erasing on your watercolor paper so that you don't damage it. You'll need some sketching or drafting paper. Here I'm just using really standard printer paper. You can use anything you have on hand. Just make sure there's nothing on the back because we'll be tracing that sketch onto the watercolor paper afterwards. And lastly, you'll need a big jug of water. I use a really large jug because I don't like to fill it up too often. For this class, I've gone ahead and printed out some inspiration photos. I tried to find some different objects such as ceramics, fruit, flowers, and some of the things that I looked for was the way that things were set up. So I really liked how this teacup was on some plates and this one was just kind of sitting next to it. Some of the petals here had fallen from the flowers onto the ground and I liked the sort of contrast of the small vase with the big flowers there. For example, you can see where the leaf is kind of folded and the oranges aren't sitting super straight and you kind of get those different angles. You can see the texture in the oranges a lot. In this photo, I really liked the contrast of the tall object versus the shorter, wider ones. And I love the sort of uneven texture in the ceramic from a royalty-free site called unsplash.com. And this photo is probably my favorite. I loved how the peaches were sort of sitting that way and the leaves are kind of guiding you through the photo and framing all those peaches around the florals. So I really liked this photo. Again, just look for things that capture your eye. This is another sort of standard, just a pear, but it's got a nice sort of stem on it and I'm looking at all the imperfections in the shape of the pear. So I printed off a color palette that I have been working a lot with recently and here are some photos from my Instagram page and I just kind of put these together and these are some of the paintings that are sort of really speaking to me at the moment. I put these images together as a sort of color inspiration to pull from. It definitely helps to take some time to find some inspiration photos, some things that stand out to you.
Uh, one thing that I do want to mention with still lifes is that it's great to start with a triangle sort of shape and it can be a symmetrical or asymmetrical triangle, but having the shape really makes you uh, think about what objects might go where. You'll see a lot of still life paintings and photography do have this kind of triangle shape to them. I think I'm going to start with these bananas. I think I'm going to go ahead and add a few bananas in here and I'm going to kind of bring them up to a third of the way up. And remember we're just doing this first initial sketching process to kind of build our composition. You don't need to make it too perfect at this point. The next picture that I'm going to pull from is this one because I really love these peaches here. I love the way that they're sitting like that and I definitely think I want to incorporate some of those in here. So I think I'm going to add about just maybe one here and peaches tend to have this sort of funny little shape to them. I quite like how you see the stem on this one. It kind of indicates a little bit more what it is. So I'm really just making this up as I go. I'm not trying to be too perfect. I think the great thing about still life is that even if it's not perfect, it'll still look great because fruits and organic objects naturally are not perfect. And that kind of takes the pressure off of trying to make something look very perfect. I'm going to take this pear and I think I'm gonna add it in around here because that will kind of start to build up that triangle shape. Let's go ahead and add it here behind the peach. I really liked the leaf here on this pear and I think I want to include something like that. So I think I'm just going to add a little leaf here like that. So you can see how my fruit right now are kind of starting to build that triangle composition and I'm using that as a sort of guideline and that way it'll look really balanced. I really like these tulips here. I think it's perfect for spring. I also like these tulip leaves here. There's just sort of, this could be a great guide to how they might sit in a pot or a vase. And I'm really enjoying the uneven shape of this vase here. It's sort of very wonky and imperfect, but I really like it for that. I think the end of the vase will probably come to about here. And I'll just sort of build that downwards. So now that I've got my vase, I think I'm going to go ahead and add some flowers to it. Uh, I kind of want to keep this a little bit more simple and minimal, very sort of delicate. So I think I might add one flower around here. And I'm using these tulip flowers as reference photo. Try to keep in mind what the flowers and leaves would be doing in an actual vase where gravity would be kind of pushing them downwards. I'm gonna go in and add some leaves now. I fill up this space here, so I'm gonna just maybe add one kind of like that. Just draping over that vase. And then I would also like to have one behind this bulb here. And another one to fill up this area. Like that. And then maybe one more just to fill it up even more. So as you can see, I have followed that sort of triangle shape and it made a really nice balance in the composition. 
So now that our sketch is done, I'm gonna go ahead and transfer it to the watercolor paper. I will be using a tracing pad to do this, but if you don't have one, what you can do is tape your sketch to a window and then tape your watercolor gently over top and then you can lightly transfer your sketch onto your watercolor paper. Just make sure you're not pressing too hard so that we don't ruin the texture of the watercolor paper. I'm going to turn it on so I can see where the sketch is falling on it and then I'm going to also tape that down just so it stays in place as I'm sketching. And I'm just gonna turn off my tracing pad to see that I've got everything in there. So here's the before and after. So you can see how this sort of organic sketching process really helped me redefine that composition and get everything looking the way I want it to. And then I used my transferring pad to clean up that sketch and make it very minimal so that when I'm painting, we're not gonna see too many pencil lines through it. So now I've got my sketch in front of me, I'm going to take my kneaded eraser, which looks like this. I'm going to roll it up in my hands and then use it like a rolling pin on the paper to very gently lighten up my sketch so that I'm really left with some faint pencil lines and it's not leaving any leftover charcoal from the pencil. So before we jump into painting, I really quickly wanted to show you a few different ways that you can use gouache. So a lot of the time I see a lot of artists using gouache to create very flat washes and flat shapes and that's great if you want to do that and I just want to show you some other ways that you can use gouache that are a little bit different and sort of unconventional than the typical way of using gouache. So Typically what I see is a lot of artists just using a very small amount of water and then and then painting some sort of flat shapes like this. That's actually maybe a little bit too much water. So you can use gouache as almost like an acrylic where it's very sort of flat like that or you can also if you add more water to your gouache you'll actually end up with something that's a little bit more like a watercolor so just keep in mind that gouache is not watercolor and it won't act like watercolor where it'll sort of spread out in the same way that uh, a watercolor would. However, you can really get some nice watery shapes by using more water with your gouache. So this is how I personally like to use gouache and I would recommend that you do a little bit of experimenting and see what you prefer. But you'll see me using gouache kind of like this throughout this class where I'm using a lot of water with it to get a little bit more dimension to it. So I'm going to start with painting these bananas here. So I'm going to grab some yellow and I think I'm going to do a sort of pale warm yellow. Once I'm happy with my consistency, I'm going to go ahead and start painting. So you can see I'm adding a lot of water here and I like to have my gouache to be this kind of consistency where it is quite watery. And I'm going to go ahead and start painting. It's also helpful to keep a little piece of paper nearby to test your colors and swatch them out before you add them to the paper. A lot of the time a color might come out a little bit different on your paper than you expect so it's good to have a little piece of swatch paper nearby so that you can test it out. And sometimes I like to just add some water directly onto the 
paper and kind of let the paint do its thing. I like to have those hard uh, edges and outlines, but then inside the object, I kind of like to just add water and then let it do whatever it wants to do. For this last banana here, you see that I'm leaving a little white gap in between these bananas and that just kind of helps identify where that banana is starting. And I don't want it to look like one solid shape. I really want them to look like it's three separate bananas here. So that's why I'm leaving a little white gap there. So now that that's done, I'm going to let that dry, that first layer. And in the meantime, I think I'll go ahead and paint my little peach over there. For this peach, I'm going to start with some red here. And then I'm going to just add a little bit of this peachy color to it. Peaches are also not really one uniform color like bananas. They've got a little bit more variation in them. So the way that I'm going to portray that is by adding water to the paint as I go. And next I'm going to paint my little tulips. I think I'm gonna make these this nice sort of pink color like a pale pastel pink and I just got some paint on my hands so I'm just gonna wipe that off. <laughs> so I'm gonna use this very bright pink over here and start with that and then I'll mix in some other colors there to just kind of make it a little bit more subtle. I might use some of this orange from my peaches and some of the yellow from my bananas in there to create a different color. And I'm going to use a lot of water on these tulips because I want a lot of variation in the petals. I want them to look a little bit softer and more dynamic. Some little white spots to show where the light might be. So it's good to note that the amount of water you use will also largely depend on what kind of paper you're using. So if you're using an Arches cold press paper, for example, you'll need a lot of water to fill up those areas. That's because the paper is 100% cotton, so it's acting like a sponge and really pulling in that water. Whereas this paper, I don't believe is 100% cotton. The paint tends to stay on the surface a little bit longer before seeping into the paper. So it gives it a little bit more time to move around and the more water you have on there, the more messy it might look because it's kind of moving around a little bit more. So taking this darker yellow color, I'm going to go in and add a little bit more depth to these bananas. So first of all, I'm going to go in and create a few shadows by adding a few indications of shadow along the edges of where the bananas sort of touch. And I'm going to actually flip my paper around here just to get a good angle because I like to kind of use my brush a little bit more on the flat side. And that really gives me some more organic brushwork. I'm going to go back to my peach, add a little bit of red. I want this second layer to be a little bit darker again. And then use this to add some dimension to the peach. So if you remember before, we had our, the little stem of the peach right here. I'm going to go in and add a little bit of shadow where that would be. And then I'm also going to add some shadow around the edges of the peach. Leave it at that. And then I'll go back to my flowers again. 
get that pink color. I'm gonna add some of that peach color to it to darken it up a little bit. And then I'll go in and add some dimension to these petals here like this. I think this is the perfect green for some spring tulips. I'm gonna add some water to that. So here I'm just going in again and adding a little bit more dimension to these tulips and I'll probably leave them alone after this layer because I don't want them to be too dark, just don't want them to look quite light and delicate. And I'm going to go back to my peach here one more time and just add a little bit more depth to it by adding another layer. And what makes this easier is that actually my paint has already started to dry on my palette, so it's already a little bit thicker than it was. So I actually don't really need to um, add water to it or anything. It's already sort of darker for me. And I'm gonna circle back to these bananas because we're gonna make them a little bit imperfect. And to do this, I'm going to take some brown. The best bananas are the ones that are sort of spotted. This would be really a great exercise if you had a really ripe banana in front of you uh, to paint all the little spots on it. I'll go ahead and add a little bit of brown to the stem like this. And then I'm gonna add some brown to the tip of the bananas. And then I think I will also just add some little spots. It's making me hungry. <laughs> I'm gonna add some brown to the stem of the banana. So you can see just by adding a little bit of character to the fruit like that, it really sort of brought it to life. And something that might not traditionally look as appealing as maybe a purely yellow banana is now uh, portrayed in a, a little bit of a nicer way. Now that I've done that, I'm gonna go in and paint my lovely little pear. And I am gonna make this pear a light green color, I believe. Maybe a little bit more to the yellow side. So I'm taking some of my yellow paint here. So I'm gonna mix some of that green paint from my tulip leaves into the yellow. I'm gonna add a different shade of green too. And you can see some of that brown is mixing in. I'm just letting it happen because fruit is never quite perfectly vibrant. Paint those leaves with my green color. I'm almost going to use like a blue green here. So now I'm going to go in and 
then add a little bit more dimension to that pear like I did with the bananas and the peach. So I'm taking a little bit more of a darker color. Again, my paint has had a little bit of time to dry up a bit more on my palette, so it, it is naturally a little bit thicker. And I'm gonna take some of that and just create the shape of the pear. There also might be a little bit of a shadow behind the peach. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my painting around again just so I can get that the flat sort of angle. And I'm going to add a little bit of shadow in behind that peach onto the pear. This is a little bit confusing, but with gouache, lighter colors tend to dry darker and darker colors tend to dry lighter. So if you can keep that in mind as you're painting, I know it's hard to remember at first and it takes a little bit of time to get used to gouache because of that, but it's because of the chalkiness of the pigment that it does that. So that's just something to keep in mind. If, if you do paint something and it looks really dark, just keep in mind, it'll probably end up a little bit lighter than you think it will. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna go in and add a little bit of detail to my leaves. And I'm gonna do this by taking a bit of a thicker paint and I'm going to paint some little veins on the leaves. I am kind of painting down the center of the leaf, but you can also paint on the edge of the leaf to indicate where it might be folding over or... And this stem will be a little bit thicker on the outer part and then get thinner as it goes in. And I'm actually just going to quickly go over my bananas one more time here because I'm noticing that the paint ended up quite thin in some areas. So really quickly I'm just going to Darken that up a little bit. I'm just gonna paint in that stem there very gently. And then I might just add a little bit of a leaf there. So with gouache, when you're layering, you need the top layer. So I'm just gonna paint a leaf over here, but I'm using a little bit less water than I did with the the other leaves that I painted before. And I'm gonna add a little stem and then just a little leaf like that. And I'm adding more paint where I can still see the peach underneath. But at this point, I'm not sure what color I wanna make the vase. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint a couple of swatches here. I'm just gonna see which color I prefer to have there. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and make this vase like a really light ballerina pink color. So I'm gonna use this really pretty pink that I have in my palette and I'm not gonna mix it at all because I really like this color. I'm very familiar with my palette because I've been using it for quite some time now. And I just kind of refill it as I go. As leave that like that for a few minutes and I'll let it dry and then I'll come back and add a little bit more detail and the finishing touches to the painting. All right, so now that my vase is mostly dry, I'm gonna go in and add a little bit of dimension to it by taking a darker pink color and just doing like I did on the other objects in this painting, I am going to Add some dimension to the sides. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually add a little bit of a cast shadow coming this way. So most of my objects, their darkest spots are kind of around the left side. 
So I'm going to add a little bit of a cast shadow using a nice, very light taupe color. So it's very, very light. I've added a lot of water here. I'm just going to add some little shadows here. Now I'm going to just go and add a few more little details here and there, such as this stem here, these bananas, I'm thinking that these tulips are looking a little bit too sparse, so I'm going to go in and add a couple more leaves. The thing about painting is to know when to stop, and I often make the mistake of not stopping. <laughs> but in this case, I do want them to look a little bit more full, so I'm going to go in and just add a little bit more to these leaves, maybe add a few more leaves to them to just make it a little bit more full, like that, and maybe one more like this here. I did before. These ones would dry pretty fast because they are quite thin. The paint is quite thin on the paper. Now on these tulips where the stem would meet the flower you would have a little bit of a thicker sort of area here so I'm just adding that in really quick. And I think we're done. I really hope you guys enjoyed this class. To recap, we first started with our inspiration photos and found some objects that we liked. We put them together in a really nice composition that felt balanced and then we sketched it out and then transferred it to our watercolor paper and then painted our beautiful still life from there. I hope you really enjoyed this video. I hope you feel like you are more comfortable with painting now if you wanted to refine your skills. If you have any questions about the materials or anything that I've used here as well, please feel free to ask. Thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you next time. Bye!